Well, most of us would do anything for our kids by helping them be the best, by helping them excel over others. But what if, even before they are born, we could go in and alter their genes in such a way that they get even greater advantages? Like giving them strength so that they are immune to illnesses and diseases, by making them taller, smarter and prettier, even if their parents themselves have never had any of those traits. Well, that world is coming. So who's tempted and who's terrified? Today we have Dr. Zehar from Cambridge University and Dr. Husna from Oxford University who will enlighten us on the pros and cons of this new coming world. Designer babies. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, Dr. Husna, would you please inform us about the new technology that mm -hmm. makes the designer babies possible? A designer baby is a human embryo which has been genetically modified following the guidelines set by the parent or the scientist to produce desired traits. And, in, and the new fertility technique for modifying human genes, referred to as CRISPR, has the ability to detect broken DNA parts and repair it. Plus, normally it takes a long time and huge effort to modify human genes. But in today's world, CRISPR is the key to make it faster, cheaper, more accurate and more efficient than any other existing gene modification methods. Hmm. So why would anyone want to genetically modify their future children? Science has taken another step forward into the future of mankind by empowering genetics to give children the best start possible. We are now presented with the opportunity to decide what personality and features we want our kids to have before they are even born. Furthermore, this is also useful for preventing heredity linked diseases. Mm -hmm. So, the actual real question is that everybody should be asking, who would miss that kind of an opportunity for their children? And Dr. Zehra, what are the potential risks that CRISPR could pose? In fact, the answer to this question is crystal clear. Let's consider the amount of information that it takes to build a human being. Mm -hmm. The file that I will save in this flash drive to assemble a little baby will actually fill an entire Titanic of flash drives multiplied 2,000 times. Somehow, the DNA has managed to pack this huge amount of information inside it. Mm -hmm. The DNA itself is such a unique structure that even if you try to change a tiny part, you could never guarantee this type of process all the probability of an occurrence of unpleasant outcomes. But human embryos have already been modified using CRISPR. Isn't the horse out of the barn? The non viable embryos modified by the Sanyat University team in mm -hmm. April 2015 couldn't have been used to initiate pregnancies. Furthermore, that experiment was not so successful. But right now, what we actually need to do with the threats directed to our future is to ensure that they do not continue. <laughs> What about parents who want to prevent children from being born with serious genetic conditions? Isn't CRISPR an astonishing opportunity for them? No, I don't think so. Parents can have healthy children who are genetically related to them without the risks of germline intervention. Well, <laughs> Dr. Isna, what would you like to say at this point? We are aware of the fact that 15% of the society is suffering from serious genetic diseases. So all the needs that these human beings should have, the freedom to give a birth to a healthier child. Alright, we talked about the many effects that CRISPR has on the individuals. Yes. 
My next question is for the both of my guests. The question is, let's say that the usage of this technology is generalized. Yeah. What would be the possible effects on our society? The more genetically children, genetically modif the more genetically modified children are found on our society, it would lead to lack of individuality. This could have detrimental effects on not only social atmospheres but also in the genetic gene pool and could complicate reproduction in the human population. Genetically modifying children's genes could create a race or class of genetically modified children who may think that they are superior to non-genetically modified children. Actually, even today, some of children are born with inherited social and economic advantages, and some of them are not. The question is that, do we want a society which has non-heritably linked diseases and a race which is cancer-free? Please, imagine a society which uh, doesn't need any kind of health services, since their genes have already modified not to be sick. I think that this is a dream which has a big chance to come true. Thank you, Dr. Husna, You're and welcome. thank you, Dr. Zehra, for your welcome. amazing answers. But um, unfortunately, that's all we have time for. Um, at this time, I learned so much from you and I wish we could speak a lot more. Um, I'm sure our audiences feel the same way, so we would like you to comment down below to let us know who's tempted and who's terrified.